Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What famous person's downfall are you waiting for the most? The famous people that were clients of the Epstein ring. Edit, thanks everyone for the awards. I think all the upvotees goes to show how important it is to people that justice be served in this case. The puzzling, and frustrating thing, is how little media attention it gathers. I love how Kislea Maxwell was charged with sex trafficking yet somehow, not a single client's name seemed to have ever been mentioned during the whole trial. I guess she was trafficking people too. No one. Edit, I know it was for Epstein. It's just egregious to think he's there the only two people involved. She was charged with a very limited set of cases for the trafficking to Epstein. This is either because they wanted to secure a conviction before moving to the more salacious charges, or to not involve the more salacious charges at all. Either way she was not charged with trafficking to no one, she was charged with Torfakig for a dead man. David Miscavige Fucker is hiding something. Where is Shelley, David? Yeah fuck them Scientologists. You know Danny Masterson, that Savetti's show, The Ranch, who's currently under investigation for raping all those women. Well his Scientology friends are harassing his victims, and one of them had their dogs mysteriously die. How do you get to the point that killing a dog seems an appropriate response? How can you get that order, hey see that guy? He's accusing our buddy of a crime, he's a bad guy. Kill his dog and not think to yourself shit, are we the bad guys? I had a relationship with someone who escaped from Codola. When I say escaped, I mean it literally. She was a messed up teenager with a mother who was in and out of psychiatric facilities. Father unknown. Codola convinced her that they would provide her with a stable home and an education and tricked her insane mother to sign over custody. Here is what she said her life living in a Codola compound consisted of. 20 hour work days. Getting more than 4 hours of sleep was an exception. Underfed. She was always hungry. Her education was basically here's how to use a washing machine. Oh, you are billed $10,000 for that training. It was in her contract. She never completed proper school. No high school diploma. When she was seriously injured in an accident, they would not provide proper medical treatment. The result was lifelong back pain that will never go away. She would sleep on the floor because even the firmest mattress was insufficient. When she tried to leave, they locked her in a cage and suggested they were going to kill her. Eventually, they just dumped her on the street with nothing more than the clothes on her back. Lots more, but you get the idea. Edit, added hyphen to clarify. 20 hour work days. Getting more than 4 hours of sleep was an exception. Apparently the people who clean Tom Cruise's private jet and homes get like $50 a day or some slave wage bullshit while that guy would be worth a Q billion. I met a girl on Tinder a long while back that wanted me to come to a barbecue which I thought would have been an easy way to break the ice. The barbecue was at the local Church of Scientology and it W as a recruitment seminar. My date was actually a homeless girl that was staying at one or the shelters. It was quite obvious she was being groomed by the church and Tinder was a bofid tactic. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland and Joel Oste. The dead eyes and manic smiles give me the absolute creeps. Edit, did not expect this to get so much support. Thanks everyone. Kenneth Copeland just looks so evil. If he were cast as the villain in a movie, it would be almost over the top because he looks like such a stereotypical evil guy. Yes. He looks like something pretending to be human. My mother fell hard for the prosperity gospel. When she passed and I had to go through her finances, I discovered she had sent Copeland thousands of dollars. It was heartbreaking, because all those prayers she bought didn't do shit and the leukemia got her anyway. Any of the televangelist people. I follow a guy on YouTube who talks a lot about them. Being a Brit, it's my only real exposure to that stuff but fucky hell they are basically just cult leaders aren't they? That ain't Christianity what they are preaching, it's some strange patriotic bastardization of it, something you might see in a Purge movie. They're basically cult leaders aren't they? Literally, yes. In the US, there's a pretty common teaching amongst evangelicals called the Prosperity Doctrine, which basically posits that if you give money to God, then you are a good person and you will be rewarded with wealth from God. It basically legitimizes them treating poor people like shit because if they're poor, clearly they're morally bad. Of course, there's the added bonus that giving money to the leader is literally part of your worship. Fucking Kenneth Copeland. 
I know you can't judge a book by its cover but he looks like Sita and his character matches. Why people give him money is beyond me. He's so transparent. Yay, he's like a villain from Sliders. Just so obviously evil. David Miscavige. I'd love to see that cult crumble to the ground for all the lives that have been ruined. Most cults reject celebrity and mainstream existences. Scientology cozies up to those powerful people, and that's why they will continue to thrive. Scientology is wild as shit. I once worked for a magazine with ties to the Church of Scientology. I had no idea at the time I was hired, I just thought all of the higher-ups were kinda weird, until they flew us all out to Folsom for their yearly company retreat. Wasn't so much a retreat as it was basically a week-long marketing presentation to get you to learn more about the church. No pressure. That's when I learned why all of the higher-ups seemed off, they were all members. Suddenly, the celebrity and political schmoozing made a lot of sense. Scientology is built on a few things. One is rich people. Money, and auditing, used for blackmailing in the future. They network very well and have the resources to help people enough to gain trust, to where they can be blackmailed into giving a lot more money or influence. If you are broke they put you in the cult section. And milk you for whatever they can. Vladimir Putin. Putin and Trump. Trump and Putin. Trudy and Pump. Jared Leto because he is objectively a shit person. I was involved in event planning for a while and I helped organize Jared Leto's band's fan event one year. His staff were the most awful people I ever met in six years of event planning. An old co-worker of mine worked on his media team. She said she'd take a two-week vacation to Europe and he'd call all hours, day and night. Knowing full well she was on vacation but he didn't give a fuck. Apparently he runs his own media team and they work out of his home. And he micromanages every aspect of this job and is an absolute nightmare to work with. He's a regular guest at my hotel and he is an absolute fuckstick. My friend is an actor and performed with him recently. The friend told me fellow actors were obligated to sign a agreement that you will not make direct eye contact with him unless it's necessary for the scene, among other things. Insane. A friend from college got to work on Dallas Buyers Club and told me that at least twice a week Jared Leto would throw a fit and lock himself in his trailer that would make shooting impossible for a day so Matthew M. C. Coahe would go out and buy the workers some barbecue and a keg of beer to drink. I wonder if the staff was pissing off Jared all the time to get more sweet, sweet Texas barbecue and shiner bock. I dunno I was pretty happy when Ellen got exposed for everything I always thought she was. A few years ago she was on a weird tour and spoke in Vancouver, BC. The entire audience of 20 Kelvin people expected her to be amazing. She was a complete bitch. It was very, very clear that she didn't want to be there and she hated the guy interviewing her on stage. Total disaster. Everyone left shocked and disappointed. Which is just mind-boggling. If I were paid countless millions of dollars to do what she does for a living, it wouldn't be a big deal to just smile and get through it. Most of us pretend we're okay with our work obligations for a lot less. Everyone in Epstein's ring. All of them. No matter who they are. Every. Single. One. I don't know what my answer was going to be but I've changed it to this guy's. Joel Osti. I'm tired of seeing his stupid face on billboards. Not long ago a janitor found a shit ton of money stuffed behind the walls of the bathroom in his church, barely any reporting was done on it. I wonder what the real story is with this. There's always money in the Jesus stand. Prince Andrew. He's not quite over the line yet. If he was medically capable of it, then he would be sweating right now. Chris Brown, beat the absolute hell out of Rihanna several times and girls are still thirsty us for him. He has so many violence cases against him, ranging from club encounters, to old managers, and of course his ex-girlfriends. But yay, the case report from when he beat Rihanna is so incredibly hard to read. I'm so happy she's with someone else, became self-made billionaire, pregnant and she genuinely looks happy now. Edit, apparently there no such thing as self-made billionaires but she's a PROC, a woman, and also billionaire, which isn't common, BC of her business ventures and that's why I said self-made, she's very successful. Yeah her account of it and the reports are horrific. I remember during that time and even now, people downplay it a lot. Like he just slapped her around some. 
which is still horrible, so these people are certifiably horrible to begin with but it's much worse than that. He smashed her face into the window and then punched her relentlessly because she confronted him about cheating. She tried to call her assistant for help because she's spitting blood all over the car and he is still punching her straight in the face while driving like a madman. He tells her he's going to beat the absolute shit out of her when they get home. She is scared and tries to call her assistant, I think. For help but when no one answers, she does what many women do when faced with scary men, she pretended someone else was on the line with her, and told them to call the cops for her. Brown then said she just made a huge mistake because now he's definitely just going to fucking kill her when they get home. Dude should be in prison.